you know, one of the things that I've learned in the past is that um, the you can you can download a manual uh, for a computer, and sometimes the manual has some errors in it, and the manuals are always recommended, and they're a good guide. But like I said, sometimes the manual does not match uh, what is the reality of the computer. So, so I've downloaded the manual for this laptop, and I'm going to follow it along, right? I'm going to visually and physically confirm uh, what's, what's inside this computer. The last time I opened it, it was to change out the M.2 SSD. So this manual, what I like about this manual is it has an, an illustrated parts catalog. And so the illustrated parts catalog is going to tell me what the layout of the computer is. See? So it's pretty awesome. I love it when the manuals are set up that way so that you have a good idea of what's what and what is where. And I see on this this particular manual, uh, the memory chips are labeled number 14. Number 14. So let's see, what's number 14? Ah, there's number 14. Okay. So, I see that they are located. So if we visualize this the opposite way, the memory chip should be right here. They should be right, right around here. Okay. Now I got two screws here. Okay. Now in some of these laptops, they have the the rubber feet along the along the bottom here. I actually like the old laptop designs where they had the screws on the corners, right? And it was much more direct uh, to to get those screws off and, and get into the laptop. But uh, for the most part, those days are past. And so for aesthetic reasons, they, they try to hide the screws under these, these rubber feet. So the reason why I don't like that is... I do think this is this is nice and polished, but the downside is that uh, the adhesive that keeps these rubber feet in place can get worn out from too much uh, access to the internals of the machine, right? And so you're, you're you're taking these off anytime you need to go in here and pull this panel. You're taking these feet off, right? And you you have to carefully remove those, and then you have to. Make sure you put them somewhere where uh, dust and other um, debris, you might say, or particulates in the air are not going to get on them, right? So that you don't weaken the adhesive strength of the rubber feet. So I'm not really a fan of that, but I understand for, for design reasons. Right? And so I got my iFixit uh, toolkit. I actually got, um, you know... I got a couple of these suckers, right? Um, you know, because you just never know. Um, I, I think it's it's a good idea to have your toolkits, right? For uh, any time you're going to work on the work on the computers, right? Um, you don't have to have different ones like I have here, but um, one of the advantages of having them, and and I got I got the different kits because you know to be honest, I just wanted to collect them, right? just never know because you know half of these screw bits I'm not going to going to actually use but you know this one is my favorite one I, I like this because it's fairly compact it has a good um, assortment of, of tools this is the iFixit Pro Pro kit um, I use this one the most uh, for my computer upgrades as well as you know making adjustments to other electronics you know, I wish I had this um, a couple of years ago when my uh, Kindle e-reader broke. I could have used something like this to uh, re potentially repair my Kindle e-reader. 
Um, I had it for a couple of years. I had the Kindle e-reader for a couple of years, and then it looks like uh, either the battery went uh, went awry or the internal storage went awry. But um, I may have been able to fix that. But um, a couple of years ago, I got uh, these iFixit toolkits, and um, my life um, working on these uh, current model laptops and desktops have gotten much better since then and so and so this illustrated parts catalog it gave me a good idea of where the components are right and so you can find that in the table of contents in this particular um, In this particular manual this manual also gives you a good idea of um, how to go about um, servicing uh, this laptop in terms of how to remove it um, how to um, get into it that sort of thing I mean you could you could tinker around with it through trial and error and figure that out I don't recommend that with um, with laptops these days because you know, if you if you start just messing around with this haphazardly, you can you can cause these edges here to fray, and um, that just opens you up to increase um, incidences of humidity, dust, that sort of thing. Um, so, but I like uh, spending time reading these manuals before I mess with the machine because that is going to um, ensure that I go about removing it the right way. Here we see, sure enough, the main screws that we need are, and actually this diagram does not 100% match what I'm physically seeing here. This is showing three screws, one here, one here, and one here. Whereas the machine that we actually have has, let's see. Yeah, I do have it oriented correctly, so yes. So I'm showing two screws here, but yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's off, but that's okay. We do know that there are screws underneath these rubber feet. Uh, the suggested means of uh, opening it is from this uh, side up. So, however, I do believe that uh, the best way uh, to open it is actually from this side up. But it's uh, been about maybe a year, year and a half since I've last opened this. So, my recollection may be a little foggy on that. So... Going to, uh, going to start removing this panel. Uh, item number three in this manual recommends that you use a, um, a utility tool. Yep. Or, or a, a case utility tool or similar thin plastic tool. And these toolkits, they, they come with those tools, so. So I'm going to get my tools out that I plan on using. And these tools are tools that I'm selecting from experience. Um, so um, in the past, I've had to use several of these in conjunction. And you don't want to use metal tools on uh, these types of chassis because they will, uh, like I said in the, uh, earlier, they will cause issues. And I'm also going to uh, take out a few of these so th those will, will come in handy. And then this is all part of preparation again. So, um, and I found that two of these are very useful. Two of these suctions are very useful. Very, very, very useful, in fact.
So basically I have the same tools across uh, multiple toolkits, um, which is fine. Okay, so, and let's, let's find the right screw for this. I tell you what, I, I really, I really am a little, a little rusty on this. So let's see. I'm almost there. Let's get. One thing that you always want to be careful about when doing this is make sure 100% be 100% certain about the um, screw that you are removing. Okay, so this is a PM 2.0 uh, 5.2 screw. Uh, let me find a flashlight. These kits do have labels at the bottom of it. It's just that um, you can't really see them well. Um, you can't see them that well. One of the improvements that they could make on this is um, in the future is the labels should not be the same color as the padding material. So let's see if you find the TR5. This actually could work, this TR5. All right. Yeah, you got this T5. This might work. Let's try it. All right. And the great thing about these trays here is that they're also um, they also double as a screw holder. So for holding the screws once you release them, and see so they have the little sections here, these little sections here. So it'll it'll hold your your screw once you uh, get the screws undone. So let's see. All right, so that's screw number one. Once again, the name of the game here is to make sure your screws do not get stripped under any circumstances. You can buy new screws. That's not a problem. It's just, uh, it's grossly inconvenient to have your screws all jacked up, if you know what I mean. So put this over here. Okay, so let me think about my next step here. You can see I'm starting to scrape off some of that adhesive. That's what I wanted to avoid. Um, I can't stand that because number one, it's it's not a clean removal, but number two. If you leave too much of that behind, you're going to ruin, absolutely ruin, the adhesion, the reapplication of this rubber, rubber feet. All right. Okay. And if you can see it here, see I got a little, little bit of um, separation there that's starting to set in, and so it's not too bad. It's actually worse on on this end. It's it's far far worse on this end. I because I've I've already upgraded to solid state, but I do think it's a good idea to upgrade your solid states either once a year or once every uh, two two and a half years. And the reason why I think it's a good idea to replace your solid states at that interval, uh, you know, and I know some people kind of scoff at that. They're like, what? Why would you replace your solid states, um, your solid state drives um, that, that often? Well, here's the thing. Solid states have good lifetime, right? Um, I think the, the industry standard for the lifetime of a solid state is about five years at this point. Although there have been tests that show that they can last 
um, you know, in, anywhere up to uh, 10 years. And people were once concerned about the, the, the right, the, the read-write lifetime of solid states, but there have been some very legitimate tests that show that they can handle petabytes of, of writes, petabytes. So that's not really the issue that I am talking about. What I am referring to is the fact that um, depending on how your computer's designed, depending on the characteristics of your motherboard uh, that's inside the computer, right? Um, solid states, they tend to get faster every two to three years. They tend to get faster every two to three years. Now, there are some diminishing returns, right? Because, you know, some of the faster solid states, they are based on um, newer transfer standards. For example, uh, PCI, Peripheral Component Interface, PCI, PCI 3 um, based SSDs. Um, let me say that a different way. A motherboard that's designed for PCI E3, you're generally not going to see a benefit um, in terms of a, a, a solid state upgrade by putting in a solid state that is designed for PCIe 4, right? You're generally not going to see a benefit there. So your motherboard, right, you're generally not going to see a benefit there. There's nothing like looking at the computer itself.